So a new JavaScript framework had just dropped. Now that I think about it, that's probably not as much of a meme as it was a couple of years ago. Now it's more of like a new LLM just dropped. But regardless, there's this JavaScript framework that I just saw on Twitter that I think shows a lot of promise. That I really am starting to like. What would happen if you took all the best parts out of all of the JavaScript frameworks that there are out there? Well, you would get Ripple JS. So you might not have heard of Ripple.js, but you've probably heard of the author of Ripple.js or probably what the author has also created, Dominic, who created Ripple.js or who is creating Ripple.js, also wrote Lexical.js and Inferno.js, Lexical used by Facebook, an extensive text editor framework. And Inferno.js was one of those frameworks that kind of came out around the same time as Svelte, where it was just blazing fast. I mean, even the creator of Spelt said, hey, while Spelt's fast, it's competitive with Inferno, which is probably the fastest UI framework in the world for now because Dominic Ganaway is a wizard. So long story short, Dominic has a fantastic resume from a former React.js core team engineer, a core maintainer of Svelte.js at Vercel, but now is launching and just launched as of August 28th, an open source Ripple. And yeah, this is what the example looks like. And just like the description says, it looks like it takes the best parts of React, Solid, and Svelte and combines them into one package. So why don't we take a look at a demo application. I'll show you why I actually think this is pretty neat. Now, if you've listened to me talk about JavaScript frameworks at all, you probably know that I really like Svelte. I like the templating syntax that it has, and I just like the magic that it brings when you're writing JavaScript with the reactivity that it has, as well as just making it seem like you're writing JavaScript, just plain <laughs> JavaScript. And yeah, I think a lot of that magic flows into Ripple.js. I'm not going to read this whole section, but yeah, Dominic talks about how this is his love letter for front and web, all the best parts of React, Solid, and Svelte, and just combine into one package. Each module does have a .ripple extension, so this is different than, you know, a .jsx or .tsx. This is more akin to Svelte, even though it does feel more like JSX. I also do like how he talks about in his experience, this superset, this Ripple extension is going to lead to better DX, not only for humans, but also for LLMs as well, which makes sense because really you then know that this LLM is not going to be confused and start writing JSX because it knows it's a dot Ripple extension. And yeah, all of this is just an early alpha version that I'm showing you. But again, I think it shows a lot of promise. So I have this template installed up and running, NPM run dev, all that good stuff in my terminal and then I have the VS code extension installed then here's what that template looks like so we have that ripple for J VS code extension installed and then in our explorer why don't I go ahead and hide myself we have the source which has assets as well as the app dot ripple we'll take a look mostly at this but then the rest is pretty self-explanatory an index dot html with a source index dot ts module with a root div which I expect this ripple dot ts or app dot ripple to be injected into and then a simple package dot JSON with only prettier TypeScript Vite and Vite plugin Ripple installed. And then lastly, the readme is pretty self-explanatory. There are some linters and formatting checks installed mostly because of prettier and then that Ripple JS extension. And anything that works great with Vite out of the box is fantastic in my opinion. You can see that this feels very svelte, but it's also written in what feels like JSX. So you have a, a let inside of a div you don't have uh, you know these little brackets that tell this that this is js no it's just js that you have inside of a div i love this it's just having that magic and simplicity all wrapped up into one so again we have those style tags that we have down here we have a div with a container but this is all one component if we go back into the GitHub repository are on the website itself. Yeah, on the website itself, you also see that there are two components in one file. So there is the ability to have multiple components per one file, which is tough to do right now within Svelte. 
Another interesting thing within Ripple.js is how Ripple is extending specific JavaScript classes. So let's say um, a set within JavaScript, and Ripple has this for uh, other JavaScript classes as well, but there is a Ripple set instead of just a set within JavaScript. And this is so that you still have an interactivity within interacting with that set. Um, so let's say this set has two. Well, on button click, we can delete two from that set or add two. And we have that interactivity with this has method, if that makes sense, because this is what we're reading. Does this set have two? If it does, then we're able to show that this is that interactive, that reactive variable. And so it works with a set just like you might expect. So it, it contains two by default because look, it has two here. If I was to remove this, um, save this, go back, and it does not have two. But if we were to add it, it's, just, it's true. Deleting two. Okay, great. But that also works the same for maps as well as arrays. So these are Ripple's way of extending the JavaScript class. So you still have that interactivity without having to uh, you know, just inject some of that magic into your existing JavaScript. You just use ripple arrays instead of a standard array. Or again, same thing with the set. And yes, ripple also has its own effect. So that way you can watch for any state changes within your app. So in this case, if this count is clicked or every time it does happen, then we're going to log counts. So looking at that, it's automatically set to zero, increment, one, two, three, so on. And that does happen based upon the changes that happen upon updates. So this is not technically just watching for anything that happens with this count uh, effect, that, that count variable. This happens anytime the component re-renders. If I'm understanding, outside of just the extension of specific JavaScript classes, the templating of like if statements or for statements is fairly Svelte-ish, but also fairly JavaScript uh, JSX-ish as well. So this is technically, you know, within a component, but then you have the ability to use for loops to say, okay, instead of doing a map, for example, you can say for const item of items, and this is in that array, we're going to show the item, but then we can iterate on that via items dot push. So what does this look like? Add item. And here's what that's doing. It's just adding a push into this ripple array to add the item based off of the length. And again, this is all reactive because we're not having to watch for that and keep track of it with any kind of state changes. That state change automatically happens within this extension of the ripple array. One of the benefits of being able to have that magic that extends JavaScript and having, you know, not only a dot ripple extension, but then also these ripple arrays. There's also some interesting elements like decorators or even event props that you can listen for things like on click, on pointer move, etc., while still being able to use that reactivity within your variables. All right, after about 20 minutes of going back and forth between the GitHub repo and my code editor and then with a little help from Claude code I've got this to do app working with ripple just to see okay what does this actually look like in practice and again this isn't the best way to do it but this is the way that I like to do it to show okay here's how I might do most of the functionality or the UI things that I would use something like ripple form and I quite like it. So this is what it looks like in uh, VS Code. We have our app, we have an array. This is the to-dos. It's nice to be able to extend this from a JavaScript class. And then it's nice that all the effect, and I don't really have, but I, yeah, I just have one. This is just checking for how many to-dos there are. So when I uh, you know, go into this to-do and I say, um, you know, clean the house, uh, check, emails, I have this that constantly is updated because the effect runs on every re-render. So um, if I was to look at the console, I don't think I have anything in the console, but if I was to say um, another one, what we're doing is just adding one and then checking, okay, how many are there that are left? So there's two left, again, re-rendering in that count, um, but adding another one 
it says that there's three left now. So what's happening? Uh, within this code, if I look at this effect, it's just adding a new count variable, but this active count effectively becomes state in our Ripple JS application. Of course, this is not persisted, and I don't think that this exists outside of this particular component. So there, there is no effective store like there is within Svelte, at least just yet. But it is nice to know that I just have this active count that exists and I can use it anywhere in my application. Same thing with the Ripple arrays, like I can use those anywhere in my application, they become reactive. So when I'm saying, you know, to do stop push, it becomes reactive, the text becomes reactive, the completed state becomes reactive. Same thing with the uh, IDs of those Ripple arrays as well. So yeah, um, and then the actual templating itself, I think this is the part that I really like because this all feels very JavaScript-y. It feels like I'm writing a React application, but I'm not intermingling this within JSX. I love the templating because this feels like HTML, but I still have a for loop. I feel like I'm writing JavaScript while still writing the HTML that I'm used to writing, if that makes sense any sense whatsoever because I get to call things like on change or this dollar sign checked to be able to say, hey, this is the reactive state for this particular to do. And then same thing with if statements as well. And it's nice to be able to do all this in Tailwind. I can just put this import Tailwind CSS and knowing that this is scoped to this component. So any other component I might have for Ripple.js on my application or on my site doesn't have these particular styles. This probably isn't the best place to do it, but for this application, this is the way I'm doing it. <laughs> and yeah, all that with only calling two imports, if you will. And this is mostly uh, the way that I think Ripple is designed to be built and be created with, is using as little as possible of the actual uh, JavaScript library, but using as much JavaScript as necessary. And again, that's all doable because there is a dot ripple extension. So what about you? Are you a ripple fan? Uh, do you see what could be possible with this? Uh, if you're not already, be sure to like subscribe and let me know what other content you might like to see. Maybe a full ripple course within Laravel or PHP might be interesting. But uh, if not, go ahead and give a star to the Ripple library, the Ripple repo, because I think it could be something really awesome. I'm excited to see where it goes. There isn't too much that it shows for on the roadmap other than SSR, because right now it's just SPA only, and then types as well. But it'd be interesting to see how this plays into bigger frameworks like you know, Ripple within Convex or Ripple within Inertia.js and Laravel. So yeah, give it a go, play around with it, and keep creating.